Well, tonight, the U.S. government is on high alert. A Russia-based cybercrime group known, as, known for using ransomware to extort millions of dollars from American and European companies is vowing to attack enemies of the Kremlin if they respond to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In a blog post, the Conti Group announced its, quote, full support for the government of, the pres of President Vladimir Putin. This as hacking collective Anonymous is declaring war on Putin. Multiple Russian government websites have been intermittently unavailable in recent days. I want to bring in now co-founder and CEO of Reach Out Technology, Rick Jordan. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks Appreciate for having it. Me. Crazy times. Very crazy times. So it, it's interesting to get your perspective. Russia has been using cyber warfare already in Ukraine, attacking critical infrastructure. What, what are they doing and what can we expect to see? Yeah, you can see that they're attacking Ukraine. There's been different government websites that have gone on and offline. That precipitated the whole invasion that they're doing right now is really to cause fear, chaos, psychological warfare before the actual ground events started taking place. So decrease the morale of the people. You know, now you have the Conti Group, as you said, that's coming on. You have Anonymous, and it's almost like battle of the cyber vigilantes. One thing we know that Anonymous has always been sort of for a peacekeeping, you know, at least that's what they say anyways. But the Conti Group, we call those APTs, Advanced Persistent Threats in our industry. They're funded by the nation state of Russia. We've tied those links before, as, a, as the U.S. government has said, as DHS has said. Now they're saying they're acting by themselves, but do we really believe that? So is Anonymous our friend now? Yeah, I know. In years past, you would say, hey, what, what are they doing? Me. I know exactly. In this case, they're really no one's friend. They just sort of operate in, within a set of parameters, which is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because they have their own rules that they stick to, that they're very loyal to their own set of rules. Are they friend or foe? I don't know. Maybe it even could be like the enemy of my enemy is my friend in this case. Exactly. The shifting alliances. So yeah. Should we here in the U.S. be preparing for a cyber attack by Russia? We should, and you've seen different government agencies come out and say, hey, we should expect something, we shouldn't expect something. The American people are on edge right now, especially small business owners. We should prepare for something like this. You know, the biggest thing that I always say is that especially cybersecurity providers themselves, like me, we need to be even ultra prepared because they'll come after us first because we have the keys to the kingdom of a lot of small businesses that we service. You know, so small businesses, stay on high alert. So you're not sleeping a lot? Not so much, no. <laughs> um, in some cases, cyber attacks also, also can be more dangerous, more deadly than conventional warfare, right? If they attack the infrastructure, the power grid, transportation systems, hospitals, the list goes on. You got it. I mean, imagine right now some of the infrastructure that's been hit in Russia by Anonymous has been media agencies, news reporting agencies. Imagine if all of a sudden everything here went dark. You know, how do we get the message out to the American people that there might even be some sort of other attack that you should expect? Those are the tactics that the Russian government would employ against the U.S. too. I mean, we've seen it with Colonial Pipeline. We've seen it with supply chain attacks that hit one agency and then funnel out to a bunch of others. We've seen Microsoft get hit in the past. You know, it's just been interesting. And I'm wondering when this is going to happen because it's not really a matter of if. Oh, those are pretty, that's an ominous warning. And can the U.S. keep up with Russian cyber attacks and Russian, the sophisticated, you know, infrastructure that they have in place when that's it comes to cyber warfare? That's a very interesting perspective because our offensive cybersecurity task force was really just established a few years ago, which was probably about a decade behind where China even was. You know, so at this point, we're still playing catch up. I know, I mean, I've been in the White House, I've advised administrations on this, and I've seen just the tenacity that we have to play this catch-up game, but there's one thing I know that cannot be broken, and that's the spirit of American people. We'll still win. Are we carrying out these attacks covertly on Russia and other countries? <laughs> well, I could never say do for tell, certain, I know, right? <laughs> well, I could never say for certain. You know, I, I've gotten questions the past couple of days, should we carry out a preemptive cyber attack? What really should we do? You know, because this is even worse than nuclear warfare, in my opinion, at this point, because you, you can just disrupt the lives and pretty much just walk right in, as we're kind of seeing in the Ukraine right now and take things over when critical infrastructure is hit. But are we carrying out attacks preemptively right now? I don't know. But we'll, just like in Russia, because there's private citizens now stepping up to say, hey, we're going to do our part for Mother Russia and go attack the Ukraine. People that work for cybersecurity agencies, private citizens, would the U.S. do the same? I have no idea. Would Microsoft step up and say, we'll fight on behalf of America? These are interesting times we're seeing. Very interesting. We really appreciate your perspective. Yeah. It's fascinating. Rick Jordan, thank you. Thank you.
Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.